as we begin this journey to become better Bible students, let us understand that this book, it will keep us from sin or sin will keep us from this book. This has always been true. And history tells us that a dusty Bible almost always leads to a dirty life. We have to understand that we are either in the word of God and the word is conforming us to the image of Christ or we are in the world and the world is squeezing us into its sinful mold. As believers, we are to be in the world, yet not of the world. And this, my brothers and sisters, can only be done if we are in Christ. The Bible clearly tells us, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. If we are going to be in Christ, we must be committed students of the word of God. I'm going to say that one more time. If we are going to be in Christ, we must be committed. We must be committed to reading the Bible. We must be committed to studying the Bible. We must be committed on today to being students of the word of God. But it's a great tragedy in the church on today. Many of us hear the word, but it is unfortunate that many of us do not know the word for ourselves. It is sad. That year after year, decade after decade, we have chosen to avoid studying the word of God for ourselves. It's a tragedy that many of us do not understand the word of God. In church, if you ask people why they don't study the Bible they may say things like this. I need something that is relevant for today. I need something that is relevant for the times in which we live in. They also might say, I need to understand the proper way to study the Bible. I really don't know what I am doing. Some folks might feel, that they are not qualified to study the word of God. Others might feel, and you might feel this way. I know I felt this way at times. I don't have enough time, but it's important that we do make time to study the word of God. But then there are some people who say the Bible is just a book. I doubt there's any power or any transforming power in the Bible. Some people just say, Bible study is boring. But I want you to ask yourself one well, today, what excuses am I making for not being more committed to the word of God? When we look at the excuses that people give for not being diligent students of the word, one of the excuses that many people use is that I need something that works. But what I want to let you know is that the Bible is relevant. See, some people have never studied their Bibles. They may read a verse here or there, but at the end of the day, they have never truly studied their Bible. They have never searched for the treasures that lie in the pages of Holy Writ. We must know one today that even in the times that we live in, the Bible is relevant. 
I want you to say that to yourself. The Bible is relevant. And because the Bible is relevant, it needs to be read and it needs to be studied. We will learn the difference between the two as we move forward in this class. But understand that the Bible is relevant for today. And because it is relevant for today, it must be read and it must be studied on a daily basis. This is the only way we will experience transformation. I want you to tell yourself, the Bible is relevant to my life and it is relevant to what I am going through on today. And we all are dealing with something at this very moment. And guess what? The Bible is relevant. Mm. We must also look at the fact that many people say, I don't know how to study the Bible. Many people lack the technique needed to be diligent Bible students. And when we look at that, many folks have never been taught how to study their Bible. This is what brought me to teaching this class, because what I realized is that we were baptizing a lot of people and we were just sending them into the church and they were having so many issues. So I looked at it and I analyzed it and I said, what we need to do is begin to properly train our members and our new members to be diligent Bible students so they can rightly divide the word of truth. So we began to implement this process to give us better techniques in studying the Bible. But see, we as church leaders, we must grasp the concept that we need to understand what those techniques are. Because see, if we don't know what those techniques are to proper Bible study, we can't teach other people the proper techniques. And how can we uphold the great commission given by Jesus if we don't know how to study the word? It clearly says, teach them to observe. How can we teach them something we don't know? So we must make it a priority to develop our technique in proper Bible study. It is necessary that we have the proper method so we can understand the word of God and be able to apply the word of God. The believer must be able to rightly divide the word of truth. But another excuse given is I'm just a layman. I just come to church. But if you are a member, if you are a leader, you still are required to be diligent when it comes to your study of the word of God. And I want us to really truly understand that on today. We all are called to be diligent students of the word of God. But there are many leaders who pay attention and have paid attention to the themes in scripture they already understand. And they feel that it's the minister's or the pastor's job to inform them of the meaning of complex bib biblical texts. It is not only the pastor's job or the preacher's job to inform you. It is your job to get to know Jesus for yourself. We must stop having a lazy attitude when it comes to our Bible study. We must be diligent. But another excuse that we've heard is I don't have time. The Bible study is not an option. It's a priority. And we must begin to prioritize our Bible study. Ask ourselves, the, ask ourselves these questions. Where does growing spiritually fit into my list of priorities? 
where does growing in Christ's likeness and Christ's awareness fit into my list of important things? Ask yourself, where does Bible study fall in my life? Bible study is one of the most important things that we will ever do because it helps us grow our relationship with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Another excuse is that I have my doubts about the Bible. Some people feel that the Bible is an interesting book, but have doubt about the content. But we must realize all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work. This lets us know that the Bible is infallible and inerrant because it is the word of God. It is God's inspired word. The Bible is incapable of making mistakes and the Bible is never wrong. The Bible is never wrong because its author is never wrong. The Bible is truth because God is truth. So the Bible is reliable and authoritative in our lives. And in this class, we are going to make some discoveries about the word of God. We are going to understand when it's all said and done that the Bible is 100% reliable and applicable for our daily lives. Another excuse that we've heard is, I can't seem to make it interesting. To make the Bible interesting, you must be committed to making your own discoveries in the word on topics related directly to the experiences you have had in your life. This will motivate you and you will be more motivated to invest time. And with more time invested, you will be able to discover more and more of God's will for your life. But don't try to guilt your way to being a better Bible student because guilt is a poor motivating factor. It is very powerful, but it is detrimental to the learning process because it kills the joy of diving into the word of God. Guilt drives more people away from the word than into the word. We have seen a number of reasons why people don't study the Bible. My question before we move on, is which one applies to you? Many times, people have not been told what they would gain out of studying the Bible. What are the benefits of Bible study? What's in it for me? What is the payoff if I study my Bible? What difference will studying the Bible make in my life? The Bible tells us, like newborn babies, long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. Peter is making three points here. There's an attitude, there's an appetite, and there is an aim. When we look at appetite, Peter is describing the attitude of a newborn baby. Just like a baby grabs for a bottle, we should be grabbing for the word of God. We should be longing for the milk of the word of God. When it comes to appetite, 
Peter says we should long for it. We are to crave for the spiritual milk of the word. The aim, the aim is, the text tells us, in order that we might grow. So we study the word of God so that we can grow in respect to salvation. Another scripture lets us know from Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 through 14, concerning him, we have much to say, and it's hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For, uh, for everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness. For he is an infant. But solid food is for the mature. Who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. See, if we look at it in our natural terms. If we were heading to college and by the time we made it to campus, we needed to go back to kindergarten, there would be something wrong with us. It would be something wrong with the college student needing to go back to kindergarten to learn his or her ABCs again. This is how it is in the household of faith. We should be communicating the truth to others as teachers, but we need to have someone communicate the truth to us all over again. We must understand this point. And I want you to write it down in your notes. The opposite of ignorance is not knowledge, but obedience. I'm gonna say that again. The opposite of ignorance is not knowledge, but obedience. See, the writer of Hebrews is telling us that we are mature when we have trained ourselves through the constant use of scripture. If we have trained ourselves through the constant use of scripture, we will be able to discern good from evil. And the problem that we face on a daily basis is that we are not able to discern good from evil. That is why there is a need for us to be students of the word of God. We have to understand that the mark of one who is spiritually mature is not how much they know, but how much they use. I'm going to say it one more time. The opposite of ignorance is not knowledge, but obedience. The Bible is the divine means of developing spiritual maturity. There is no other way. The third passage, and we looked at this prior, it says all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. That's 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. So scripture is inspired by God. Scripture is useful to teach us what is true and make us understand what is wrong in and with our lives. Number three, scripture reveals places in our lives where there is sin that needs to be addressed. Scripture, lastly, is used by God to equip his people to do his will. So when we look at it, just to break it down real quickly, when we look at the first one, all scripture is inspired by God. That means it is 100% accurate, both the Old Testament and the New Testament. All scriptures is inspired by God. And inspired by God means that scripture 
is breathed out by God. Due to scripture being breathed out by God, scripture, like we stated before, is both infallible and inerrant. It also goes on to tell us that the word is for teaching and reproof. When we talk about teaching, the word of God gives divine instruction. Teaching or doctrinal content of both the Old Testament and New Testament. The scripture provides the comprehensive and complete body of divine truth necessary for a life of godly living. When we talk about the word for reproof, it rebukes us for wrong behavior and or wrong belief. The scripture exposes sin that then can be dealt with through confession and repentance. Next, the word, it provides correction. When we talk about correction, we're talking about restoring something to its proper condition. The word here appears only here in the New Testament, but was used in biblical grammar of writing or redirecting a fallen object or helping back someone to their feet when they have stumbled. Scripture not only rebukes wrong behavior, but also points the way back to godly living in righteousness. Scripture also provides positive training. And they originally used this, this, this word when it referred to a child. But scripture provides positive training in godly behavior. It tells us how we should live right, how we should love right, how we should walk right. It doesn't just rebuke us, but it corrects us for our wrong behavior. The word, last but not least, is for training in righteousness and for the equipping of the saints. It teaches us, like I said it before, how we are supposed to live, how we are supposed to love, and how we are supposed to walk. We are supposed to be walking according to the will and the way of Jesus Christ. And we will only know the will and way of Jesus Christ if we immerse ourselves in scripture. The word is complete. And it equips every believer for their process that leads them to our purpose. And as we walk in relationship with God. We find ourselves walking day in and day out in our process that ultimately God is going to get us to our purpose. And we get there by walking in fellowship with our God and being students of the word of God. This concludes chapters one and chapters two. I'm going to ask you to read over both chapters. Please get the book you will be able to use this book until the end. So review chapters one and two. If you have any questions, any concerns, or any anxieties, feel free to contact me. I hope you all have a blessed day. I hope you have enjoyed this class. I hope to see you soon.